What's up everyone, my name is Joe and welcome to Film Focus. Today we're taking a look at the Nikon One Touch, otherwise known as the Nikon L35AF. The Nikon One Touch is a fully automatic point and shoot 35mm camera. It's also the third generation of the Nikon L35AF series. Let's first take a look at the outside of the body, and I'll show you all the features and functions of this camera. One of the best features of this camera is its simple design. There aren't too many moving parts, and it doesn't take a lot to get started shooting your first roll of film. On the bottom, we have your on-off switch. This also protects the lens when the camera is turned off, as well as locks the shutter, so it won't allow you to accidentally expose a frame when you're not using the camera. On the front, you also have your self-timer switch. When it's to the right, it is on, and it's automatically set to around 10 seconds. When the dial is vertical, it's turned off. You also have a flash on the left side of the camera, and when the camera thinks that there isn't enough light, it will automatically pop up. So if I do this, you can see that the camera pops up, You, or excuse me, the flash. So you can trick the camera into using the flash in broad daylight, you can also override the flash by holding down the shutter halfway and then just pressing the flash back down and you won't need to use it. A really nice feature which allows you for really maximum creativity with a really simple camera design. On the top we also have your frame counter which counts up with you and only in even numbers. So let's say you're on frame 23 like I am now, the dial will actually split the distance between the two so you know where you are on your roll of film. On the back, we have your viewfinder, and just next to that, we have your flash ready light. This will illuminate to a bright red or orange when your flash is ready to fire. Another great feature about this is the camera will actually lock the shutter if the flash is up and is not ready to fire, so you don't accidentally underexpose an image that absolutely needs the flash. Underneath that, we have the dial, or the switch rather, that will open up the back panel, as well as a memo viewfinder to see what film you have loaded in the camera. On the bottom, we have a tripod mount, which I believe is actually plastic, but it works just fine. There's also a two-part switch for the auto rewind feature, and this is really great. You won't accidentally rewind your roll of film when you're only halfway through. And then on the far left, we have the battery compartment. This camera takes two AA batteries and they will last you a very, very long time. According to the manual, well over 100 rolls of film if you're not using the, the flash too much. This camera is equipped with a 35mm f2.8 lens, which is somewhat of an industry standard for these types of cameras, but the overall image quality absolutely makes this camera stand out among the rest, especially for the price point. There are later versions of this camera which would allow you to use screw-on filters, but I find that if you really want to use any of those, you can simply take the ones that are on your lenses for your DSLR that are most likely bigger than this lens and just place them in front of the camera and it'll work just fine. The autofocus system is also one of the best and worst parts about this camera. It's a primitive system and it's relatively clunky, but it does get very accurate results if you're working in a clean environment. If there's anything that might be in between you and your subject, the autofocus will tend to get a little bit confused and may not render an accurately focused image. So just be sure to watch the lever that's in the viewfinder and make sure that it aligns accordingly to how far away your subject is. If you're used to shooting DSLR or SLR cameras, the shutters tend to be rather sensitive. That's all different with this system. You have to press down the shutter a pretty good distance, almost completely below the threshold of the camera, just to get the autofocus system to work. Now to actually take the photo, you have to push that all the way down into the camera. So make sure that you have a strong hold and your your finger is all the way on top of the shutter. If you're kind of over here to the side, you won't actually be able to press the button down far enough to take an image. Now once you've depressed the shutter all the way, the camera will take the photograph, but it won't advance the film until you've released the shutter. 
So if you're in a crowded place or somewhere where it's rather quiet and you don't wanna be making a lot of commotion while taking photos, you can simply press the shutter all the way down, move to an area where you won't make a scene and then release your finger while the film advances because the film advance is a rather loud um, action. So here, check it out. There's the autofocus, there's the shutter, and the film advance. Now that I've shot my entire roll of film, I want to reload the film back into the canister so I can take it out and put in a new roll of film. To do that, we're gonna use this two-step reloading feature here on the bottom of the camera. You will first slide over the lever, and then while the um, slider is over, you would then press down the button. Once the button is pressed, the camera will take care of everything else for you. And you don't have to hold it down the entire time. Once it's pressed, it's pressed. So here we're gonna slide it over, press down the button, and the camera will reload the entire roll of film. Once the noise stops, you can open up the back of the camera by sliding this little button down and take out your film. This is where you would put a new roll of film and this is where you would align the sprocket holes on the film itself to wind properly into the back of the camera. You can see here there are some gold plated prongs. These read the DX codes that are printed on the back of every modern roll of film. And different rolls of film that have different ISOs have different codes on the back. So by having these codes, it tells the camera what ISO it is and how to properly expose the image. You can trick these cameras into thinking that the roll of film is either faster or slower than its box speed. Like I've done with this roll of Tri X 400. I've actually scratched off part of the DX code, so when I load this into the camera, it will shoot this roll of film at 1600 rather than 400 its box speed. The older versions of this camera were only capable of shooting films up to a speed of 400. The newer models like this generation and so on they can shoot rolls of film up to 1600, which is a vast improvement, especially with all of the modern emulsions that are out now. There's a lot more options of films for you to be able to shoot with this camera. The size and weight, ease of use, and overall image quality make this camera a great pick for those who are new to film photography and enthusiasts alike. You can get great results from landscapes, portraits, and everything in between. It's so small and lightweight that it can fit into any camera bag, suitcase, or even your pants pocket pretty easily. I personally don't leave home without this camera, just because it's that much fun to shoot with. Now these cameras are relatively easy to find online, but finding them in good condition and at a reasonable price can be a little bit more taxing. Although this is a very high performer, it's not in the same demand as, let's say, a Contax T2, which is a high-end point-and-shoot camera. Even though they're not made anymore, those cameras can cost you up to a thousand dollars. This you can pick up in good condition for under a hundred bucks. Definitely worth it in my eyes. Let me show you guys a slideshow of some of my favorite images I've shot with this camera to give you an idea of what it's capable of. Thanks so much for checking out the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.
I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.